This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More on them later in this video. Yes, yeah, you read that title correctly. We're going to be running modern software on Windows 2000. Well, at least we're going to try to. Now, the first thing you might ask is nostalgic. You've already done videos on Windows Vista and Windows XP, and the compatibility for new stuff on there was kind of hit or miss. What makes you think you're going to have any sort of success on Windows 2000? I mean, heck, it was made for professional use only, and it had one of the shortest runs out of any version of Windows. Well, let me introduce you to a little piece of software called Kernel X, otherwise known as Kernel extension. Pretty much what this does is that it tricks programs into thinking that you're running Windows XP. The way it does that is that it changes the NT version number from 5.0, which is Windows 2000, and changes it to 5.1, which is XP's NT version. The reason why this works, at least back then, was because to check for compatibility, programs would search for the NT version number to see if they could actually run on that version of Windows or not. Programs did this so they didn't run into any sort of weird compatibility issues trying to run on an older version of Windows. Especially back then when you still had a a lot of people running on Windows 9X. But I'll explain more about this later in the video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. But before you do, remember to go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you want some extra perks, hit that join button down below and you can have early access to videos. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and thank you guys for watching. Alright, so instead of me just making you guys sit through the install, I'm just going to kind of briefly go over it because it's kind of the same in all of the different Windows versions. And I'm pretty much just going to repeat everything that I said in those other two videos, so let's just do it this way. Alright, so like in the last two videos, I'm still using VMware. I almost decided to use PC EMU, but I just went ahead and did VMware this time. And whenever I do some Windows 9X stuff, I'll use that other one. I'm going to go ahead and put the specs that I gave this virtual machine up on the screen here. For what we're going to be doing in this video, it's not going to be too important. I mean, it is Windows 2000, so you don't have to really give it a lot. But if you guys were curious, here they are. Now, in Windows 2000, the setup process still looks very similar to what it did in Windows 9X. It wasn't until XP where they redesigned it and made it look a lot better. This setup actually looks identical to Windows Me's, just with different colors, which makes sense because this is the professional version of Windows that was released at that time, and both versions were meant to kind of look very similar. And this was done intentionally because this is the last time that there were two separate versions of Windows. Now, I know we talked about this in the Windows XP video, but they wanted to make Windows Me feel as close to Windows NT as possible to get people to get used to the NT platform instead of running on the Windows 9X platform that was still running on top of DOS. And that's why in Windows Me you saw things like DOS mode and many other features that were in Windows 95 and 98 get removed. And that was part of the reason why Windows Me was so unpopular. That and all the other issues that it had. But this video is not about Windows Me. I'll be giving it its own video eventually. But that's why Windows Windows 2000 and Windows Me look so similar. The install went pretty smoothly, but I did have one weird issue though. For some reason, whenever I did the setup and put in my product key and then it started copying over the files, it acted like it was done, but then it restarted and made me do the setup process all over again. I have no idea what causes this. I don't know if it's the VM or maybe something wrong with my installation disk, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird. But other than that, after the second attempt at doing this, it all loads up just fine and we load right in the Windows 2000. And this is where we run into yet another problem. Unlike the last two videos with Windows XP and Windows Vista where VMware automatically just lets me set my resolution to 1920 by 1080, for some reason I'm stuck at 640 by 400 with 16 colors. So I just thought a quick fix would be installing VMware tools, but guess what? That gives me even more problems. Because apparently this version of VMware tools doesn't even support it, so I had to go out and go find another one. I try that version and I get this DLL error. So not knowing what to do, I go to Google and apparently I have to install one of the updates that I actually have to do for Kernel X anyway. So I guess this is just the perfect time to go ahead and segue right into installing Kernel X. Alright, so one good thing I guess is that I've actually done this process before, so I've done the kernel X for Windows 2000 and I have a disk with all the stuff that we need on it, but that's whenever the Windows Update website still worked, so I don't really know how much of this that we can still use. I know there's a way to still do the updates, but as I'm recording right now, I haven't looked that up yet, so we'll figure out how to do that later in the video. Another thing that you guys probably have noticed is that the video drivers still haven't been fixed. We're still in 16 colors and in really low resolution, so I think one of these updates 
does actually fix that DLL error that VMware Tools is bringing up, so let's get right into it. Alright, so in this folder here, all the updates are numbered. It's very important to do these in order, because if you don't do these in order, then you have to reinstall Windows 2000 and do it all over again. Trust me, I've done it out of order before, and it's not a fun thing whenever you figure out you have to reinstall Windows 2000 and do this all over again because you didn't follow instructions. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is update Internet Explorer to IE6. This update is pretty much pointless now because the only reason why you did this was just to update Internet Explorer so you get to the Windows Update website. But now that that's down, there's really no point in doing this. But I'm just updating it anyway because I have it in the folder. It's kind of a pointless update because I'll never use Windows Internet Explorer on here. And this virtual machine will probably get deleted after this video anyway. So yeah, I'm just doing it for the hell of it. But after that, it asks us to restart. So get used to that. We'll be doing that several times. And after it restarts, we move on to our next next update. And this will be update rollup 1 for Windows 2000. Now pretty much all this is is just an accumulation of security updates all rolled up in the one installer. But one thing that this does fix is that DLL error that we were having with VMware tools. I don't know how a bunch of security updates managed to fix that, but after I did this update I went ahead and installed VMware tools and fixed our screen resolution. So hey, it actually looks half decent now. The next update we have to do is another one that I'm not really sure if we have to do or not, and it's pretty much just an update to the Windows update agent. I don't know if we'll be using that or not, but just to be safe, we're going to install it anyway, because I really don't feel like doing this again. The next thing we have to do is this root update, which I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I think it has something to do in the tricking programs into thinking this is Windows XP. The only reason why I say that is that the message that pops up says the roots have been updated to April 2016, so that's the only thing I can think of. And last but not least, the final update that we have to do is the Windows 2000 hotfix, which is pretty much just a lot more security updates and a few bug fixes. This update doesn't take very long and it has you restart for one final time. And now we can do the other updates we need to do for kernel X. Like I said earlier, I'm actually going to have to look up how to even do this. So while I'm looking up things that I should have looked up way before I even thought about making this video, let's talk about today's video sponsor, ExpressVPN. Let me ask you something. How safe do you think you are on the internet? Do you think you can go into a coffee shop or a McDonald's and just log into their public Wi-Fi and never get hacked? Or do you trust big tech companies like Google and Microsoft not to sell your IP and information to the highest bidder? That way they can funnel ads to you and do God only knows what else. If not, then let me introduce you to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN protects you from that and much more by masking your IP address, making it extremely difficult for hackers to get your information. Unlike when you try to use incognito mode and get a false sense of security because they make your browser look a little fancy. ExpressVPN uses real technology to protect you from the outside world, using the best-in-class encryption methods that will take even our best supercomputers billions of years to crack. The added security is not the only great thing about using a VPN. Since you can connect to 105 different countries, you can access Netflix shows that are in the UK that you can't watch here in the US or vice versa, and it's also great for people to live in nations where their internet usage is really locked down. That that way they have some way of escaping censorship. So if you like the sound of all of that, go ahead and click the link down below and get a 12 month subscription plus an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and without further ado, let's get right back into it. Alright, so after taking a little break and actually figuring out how to do these updates, I found out that pretty much all of those updates we just did were still necessary, but there is one big difference. Instead of using the Microsoft update page, we have to use a site called Legacy Update, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Because first we have to install something called WSUS, and this pretty much just lets us connect to the update page. Probably one of the most important updates of the entire thing, besides the kernel X. Now whenever you're done with this update, we're pretty much done with all of the updates you have to go out and install. So now we're ready to configure the auto updates. But before we get into that, I do want to say a special thanks to i430, because if it wasn't for all the stuff that he compiled on his website that I have on screen here, and his YouTube channel telling you how to actually do this, there's no way I would have been able to do this. And I definitely recommend if you want to do this yourself, go check out his website on screen here. I would put it in YouTube description, but for some reason his website just always gets flagged and it never works in the YouTube description. But if you're in the middle of doing this kernel X on Windows 
Windows 2000, you could just open up Internet Explorer and his site still works on there. And it's really helpful and you don't have to make like a bunch of ISO files and shit. But either way, once I was done configuring the auto updates, now I have to install legacy updates. Pretty much what this is, is that it just takes the place of what the old Windows update website was. And it's just a repository of a bunch of different security updates and things like that. And the cool thing is, is that it just works with the auto update application on Windows 2000 already. So you don't have to worry about installing each update and doing them all manually. Installing legacy updates is very simple. All you do is just go through this installer. And then after that, pretty much everything's just ran through their web page. All you do is just go ahead and check for updates and then it checks your system for what updates you need. And don't be surprised that if on the first go, it takes you like 10 or 15 minutes to get the first batch of updates. But after that, it does run pretty smooth. You'll probably have to do this three or four times because for each batch of updates, there will be updates for those updates. So plan on taking about an hour to two hours to do this. But once you're finished with those, we can get right into installing kernel X, which is a good thing because I'm tired of saying the word update. So let's get right into this. Alright, so now that we have all of the updates installed that we needed to do, now we can go on and actually install kernel x. Now installing kernel x is really simple. All you do is run the installer, then it gives you this prompt of all these different settings. Just use the ones I have on screen here because you don't really have to use anything else. All of these settings are right whenever you open it up. And then after that it will prompt you with this update installer. You just do that, let it restart, and you have kernel x installed on your Windows 2000 computer now. It's simple as that. Whenever it restarts though, don't worry about this error. Everybody gets it. I'm, I'm not really sure why it happens but it doesn't affect anything so just click through it and you'll be fine. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video I wouldn't be using Internet Explorer but it turns out that I am going to be using it a little bit. Now what you want to do is go into the settings and enable the TLS modes. This will help Internet Explorer run somewhat modern web pages. It's not going to make it run all of them and actually it's still not going to be able to open most of them but this will enable some compatibility for some more web pages. Now the web browser that I'm using is the same as the last two videos, it's Firefox. I know the VM makes it really, really slow, but this would work a lot better on actual hardware, so don't let the VM kind of make this look bad. I did want to try out Pale Moon, but I couldn't get it to work for some reason, but it said it needed Windows XP Service Pack 2, so I guess Kernel X only updated the version number to the release version of XP, or at least Service Pack 1. I also installed an older version of Java and WinMip on this. Not that I would really even be able to use the older version of Java to begin with, but WinZip is pretty useful since I couldn't find a version of WinRAR for this, even though using WinZip is extremely archaic. It's nothing like using WinRAR. And in i430's webpage, I did also find an update for Windows Media Player 10. So I installed that on here, and now I have the latest version of Media Player I think I can use on this. But trying to use this on the VM is nearly impossible, at least on my PC, since it's not really that good at running virtual machines. So I can't really demonstrate it, but hey, you can update it. Now I was able to get LibreOffice to work, and it's pretty much the same as even the newer version versions today, so nothing's really changed at all. I think this is like version 5 or something like that. I would have to look back to see which version I installed, but yeah, it works just fine, and you can pretty much do everything that you would need to do on this. How did I get some of the basic programs out of the way? Let's install some games. And I didn't really have a lot of luck with this. For some reason, the virtual machine doesn't like DirectX with Windows 2000, because I tried to install it multiple times and just had several issues. And then at one time, I thought I actually had it installed, and then LEGO Star Wars was wouldn't load. So for some reason DirectX doesn't work on the virtual machine, but this won't be a problem on actual hardware, so you should be able to run your actual games. Now I did see that the Dolphin emulator was on the XP part of that web page, and I thought to myself I just have to try to see if this works, and it didn't. Even though this virtual machine would have never been able to run it, I was just interested to see if it would actually work. I don't know, maybe if I go around searching for an even older version it might work, but that might not even be the issue because it was giving me a weird error and I couldn't figure out what it was. It might even be the simple fact that DirectX isn't working properly. So to have a game to work on this, I just went ahead and installed my copy of LEGO Island, just to say that I did get a game to work on this. I did try to install LEGO Racers too, but that just gave me a black screen. I was kind of hoping that one would work too, because that one's actually a pretty fun game. The only problem that I had with LEGO Island was that the screen resolution was extremely small. It's actually about as small as a setup screen before you get the drivers installed. So I have it zoomed in here, so if the quality's really low, that's why. But yeah, that's about all I have for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching 
watching me try to install Kernel X. It was definitely pretty interesting. I pretty much had to relearn how to do this whole process, so I know there's many points in this video where I like contradicted myself, but at the end we did figure it out. And it turns out that Windows 2000 is kind of usable. I think it's a lot more usable on actual hardware. Trying to do this stuff on a virtual machine is really difficult, but at least I was able to get some functionality out of it. But either way, I want to say special thanks to my super supporters on screen here. If you would like to become a super supporter, go ahead and hit the join button down below. It will give you perks like getting early access to videos and getting your name put at the end of these videos. I also want to say another special thanks to our new sponsor, ExpressVPN. This is my first ever sponsorship and it's kind of cool that this channel, even though it is kind of small, was able to get some sort of sponsorship. So that's really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want more content like it, please subscribe. Without further ado, I am out of here and thank you guys for watching.